What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Legal Marketing Live, presented by Spotlight Branding, joined by Mark Cerniglia, Hello as again. always, and I'm Daniel Decker, and we're excited to have you guys with us today. Good topic today. Yeah, so we're going to talk about a, a, a fun topic, a topic I think that uh, you guys will probably, um, that'll resonate with you a little bit. We're going to talk about kind of a, a change that we've seen to the legal industry, and specifically the way legal services are being delivered over the last couple of years, but really dating back further than that. So. We're going to talk about the commodification of law and, and what that looks like and, again, how legal services are being changed in, in terms of their delivery. So, Mark, do you want to talk a little bit about what we mean by that and, and we'll go from there? Yeah, well, I mean, it's really a loaded thing, but, I mean, essentially, you know, I think that if you look at just society as a whole, so many things are happening, right? I mean, it's this development of we're, we're able to get so many more things on demand. Um, we're able to get them through apps on our phone. Um, and it, it's, it, it's making a lot of things become, become a commodity. Um, you know, I mean, I can pull up my phone right now and a car can pull up and pick me up, right? I can have lunch delivered. Um, but what's interesting is this is bleeding into law. You know, I could pull up my phone right now and use a service like Avo Advisor to uh, have a lawyer on the phone right now for 15 minutes, right? And um, I don't think we're saying at all that there's anything wrong with those services. It's, you know, this isn't about that. It's just that um, as people can get things more on demand or automated. That's the other side yeah. I didn't mention, right? I mean, you have things like LegalZoom, yeah. you know, um, as people can kind of do more do-it-yourself legal services yep. and things like that, what, I, what, I, what we're seeing that it does is it turns the perception of the practice of law into a commodity. Yep. Oh, I can do this myself with an online tool, or I can pull out my phone and have instant access to an attorney for 15 minutes if I need it, and I think that it's not necessarily something that, uh, I think it can be good in its own way, but I think for the attorney out there who wants to continue to build a business, they need to figure out how to almost fight that tide and not let their own practice become right. a commodity. Right. Yeah, I think the big three that I think about when, when we're talking about this topic are Rocket Lawyer, LegalZoom, and then Avo Advisor. And now the first two, Rocket Lawyer and LegalZoom, are, are services that are, are mostly kind of a DIY model where, where you know you can go purchase the documents to, uh, to, to get a divorce for you know 99 bucks and maybe you need to complete it yourself. Um, they also typically will have like an upgrade service where you can pay a little bit more and actually get one of their lawyers to review it. And of course the way it works is it, the lawyers don't actually work for the company. it's farmed out in an independent contractor model. Avo Advisor is very similar. Um, I think it's 40 bucks. You, you can go to Avo's website, pay 40 bucks, and as the consumer, you pay 40 bucks. You get connected with, with a lawyer in the area. And I think Avo takes like a $10 cut, and the lawyer gets 30 bucks. And so there you go, 15 minutes on the phone. Um, to Mark's point, like that does just represent kind of a wholesale change in the way the relationship between the consumer and the attorney work, right? We're literally consuming legal services differently yeah, now, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's like rather than, you know, and, and for the consumer, part of the reason this is such a powerful thing is that you could argue in some cases it, it really does provide some great value for the consumer. If, 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 if we have a question about our business and we need to talk to a lawyer, you know, the, the traditional way to do it would have been, you know, we need to have somebody on retainer, we need to go down to their office, whatever. Now what Avo Advisor offers is just the ability to pick up your phone, spend 40 bucks, and, and pick an attorney's brain for 15 minutes. So it's easy to see the appeal. And again, we're not making a value judgment on, on kind of the whole, like, the fact that it's happening, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. That's how the economy works, right? Think Netflix and Blockbuster and... and um, but it is what it is, and as a lawyer, it's affecting you. So I think what we want to talk about today is how can you kind of protect yourself from, from being viewed that way and forced to constantly compete on price and, and forced to you know, change the way that you engage with clients and ultimately become less powerful. So, I mean, my Im immediate thoughts on that is it really starts with your brand, and it starts with creating a brand that positions you above those free services. What well, are your thoughts there? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess, I mean, my thought is that I guess the why matters too, right? I mean, my my the reason I think that this matters too is is because if people are starting to see the practice of law becoming more of a commodity and, and something they consume on demand or do it yourself, I think the way to counter that is to is to kind of remind people that it is still a specialty. You know, this is still something you had to go to extra schooling for. And that required a certain level of expertise. And look, there might be some practice areas out there that really are streamlined and there aren't a whole lot of nuances or variances. But, you know, 
um, I think it's really important to continue to educate your market on the fact that more times than not, there are specific nuances that are unique. There are yeah. things, yeah. like there are reasons they need a human and an expert, yeah. <laughs> both those two things right. involved right. in this. And I think when you build your brand, you kind of you kind of go around this this viewpoint of seeing things as a commodity. You kind of go around that and almost remind people that that this is an area of specialty, an area of expertise, and you are that expert. And I think that will allow you to still be able to charge the rates that you yeah. want to charge, um, and kind of make sure that at least in your market, people don't begin to either a see you as a commodity or b choose a commodified legal service over you. Right. I think how you market to them is really important. Yeah, and and I also think that accepting the fact that there are there are a percentage of consumers out there who are going to go for the cheapest option no matter what. I think you should accept that fact and and kind of become okay with it, right? There are people out there who whether it's for budget constraints or, or right. preconceived beliefs or whatever, they're just going to choose the dirt cheap way to get it done. And, and maybe that's, you know, DIY, maybe that's legal zoom, maybe that's, you know, a 15 minute call where they try to, you know, get every single question answered, but like be okay with that, I guess is my point. And, and don't chase those clients, right? Because those people who are just in it for, for a price and that's their differentiating factor, like they're not going to be good long-term clients anyway. So, so don't try to chase those people and instead think about to Mark's point to what you were saying just a minute ago is the people that do appreciate like the human awareness and, or the, the human touch and do understand that, hey, there's a lot of nuance to this and my situation is unique and this generic form on the internet probably isn't going to address all of my specific needs. Market yourself to those people and build a brand that appeals to those people and let the people that are, you know, looking for a fifteen dollar solution or a forty dollar solution, let them let them go and, and don't chase them, I think. Well you know what's funny, you just made me think of kind of a personal example, like so I'll go ahead and admit to the world that I still do my taxes on TurboTax every year, right? Which is I mean, this that's kind of like the equivalent yeah. of what we're talking about here, right? And the funny thing is I know CPAs, I even know CPAs I like, but it's like the truth of the matter is to your point about who you're chasing, that's what made me think of it. Like don't don't chase people, I agree. But here's the really cool thing. If you market yourself properly, you will take some of those people who would have been more price conscious and you might actually help them kind of rethink, you know, whether whether they want the do it their self approach or whether or not they're willing to actually pay you a good price. And the reason I bring up the TurboTax example is quite honestly it's because no accounting firm, I feel like, has marketed themselves in a way to me that makes me feel like that they're going to bring the unique expertise that is going to make it worth it for me to actually pay them more to do my taxes than what I pay online. So I know it's kind of a, a funny example. No, I, I, it's you know? funny that you bring that up because we've, we've had this conversation and right. I, I do pay an accountant to do, to do my taxes and I probably pay five to ten times more than what you pay on TurboTax. And part of it is, in this case, just a different mindset. Like... You don't mind jumping in and getting your hands dirty That's with the, true. With the details, it. and I'm like, man, like this is complicated. Like I have kids, I have a couple different businesses going on. Like, please, like I want a human who's gonna step in and get this done, you know, on my behalf, so I don't have to worry about it. And not that, like in every case, there's not there's not a right or a wrong solution, but in this case, like market to people like me who just want the peace of mind of being able to say, all right, here's all my crap. Get it done. Save me as much money as you can, and and don't don't bother me with the details. You know. Yeah. Well, I think the interesting thing is you can build on that too, right? I mean, I think that if the, here's the funny thing, I think if people also marketed to you in a way that made you, because okay, you'll you'll take anyone who you feel like is going to do a good job, and that applies to law too, right? Like, how often is someone just going to take anyone they feel like can do a good job? But if someone markets themselves to you in a way that makes you feel like they're going to do an exceptional job, that there's something about them that just puts them a notch higher than everyone else who could do your taxes or help you with your legal service, you're probably willing to pay more. Yeah. And the funny thing is that same person you work with, that same marketing strategy might also kind of incite me to finally go, okay, <laughs> I will have them do it. And so it can also, not only can it help you kind of steer this tide of commodification that's happening back towards your favor, but heck, it might even help you even charge higher rates, yeah. right? I mean, that's... Yeah, no, exactly. That's perfect. So I think, I guess, hopefully we've established that, you know, there, there are a set of people who are, are just going to go for the cheapest option. And there are a set of people who value paying for good legal advice. And you want those people to be your customers. So let's, let's talk a little bit. 
we don't have a ton of time. We probably can't get all the way into this, but let's let's start with what are some of the key things that that attorneys can do to build themselves into a brand, an expert, and and not be a commodity. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about a few of them on our on our last few uh, you know episodes, but I mean, some of the basics like blogging and having a social media presence. Um, Having those things be consistent is really important. They really they really humanize your law firm in a lot of ways. Kind of reminds people this isn't you know this isn't just some machine running over here. This is real people and will relevant. Um, and and when you use those channels like blogging and social media and video, uh, email newsletters, we talk about that. When you use those channels to educate people, I think that would be my key answer yeah. to your question. When you when you take the position of the educator. Um, you know, all of a sudden it, 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 it switches in people's minds how they see you. They right. begin to see you as an authority, as an expert, yep. and all of those things, authority, expert, um, thought leader, those are in complete contrast to the idea of something that's a commodity. Right. Right? And so it's like the people that we were just talking about who are willing to pay for good legal advice are attracted to the type of person you just exactly. described. Yeah. No, I think I think that's great. I think that's a huge part of it. I would also say one of the key first steps is really to zero in on a niche and not try to be a generalist, not try to be you know, a, a divorce attorney and also a criminal defense attorney and also an estate planner and also you know, immigration. Like, you can't really be perceived as an expert if you, are, if you are spread so broad. Even if you're really good in all of those areas, that's not how like, the market will perceive you. So we've, talk, we've talked about this before, and, and I realize it's a complicated subject, but I would really encourage you to narrow your practice down to a single practice area or a group of, of related practice areas and put all of your marketing into, into that, building that brand image and, and like building your exp expertise in that specific niche. Because when you do that, that's how you become perceived as an expert at that thing. That, that, that's a great point. I mean, gosh, I mean, we, I mean, maybe not even a practice area, right? Maybe we're willing to go one step further and kind of break apart that practice area. I mean, we know business attorneys who focus on franchises. Yeah. We know divorce attorneys who focus on just men or just women. Um, we know uh, PI attorneys who focus on maybe, you know, just medical malpractice or, you know, just truck accidents. I mean, there, there are... You know, um, we know, we know criminal defense attorneys who really just do DUIs or just do white collar. And I think to your point, I think that, um, you know, a great example would be, okay, you know, it's so easy to get business contract templates online today, right? So, um, you know, if I needed a new contract for something tomorrow, if I was the one doing the research and not you, <laughs> I'll probably go online and find a template, ironically enough. Um, but, um, but the funny thing is, if there was, I'm just kind of making this up, but if there was actually a lawyer out there, who focused on being the legal counsel for marketing businesses, like that would pique my interest. Yeah. You know, like I'm not saying we work with them or not, and, and that niche might be kind of, I don't know if too unique as a thing, but it, I'm not saying go do that. I've never heard anyone doing that. But the point is, is when you're the consumer of that niche, it just changes everything for you when someone says, oh, well, what I focus on is, is, yeah. is you and yeah. your type of situation. Yeah. That just changes everything. Exactly, exactly. The person who's looking for, for specific help in a specific area is going to be much more attracted to the attorney that focuses on exactly that thing. So obviously the calculation to make is like basically how focused can you make your niche and, and still be a broad enough customer base you know, out there for you. I, I think that's a great first place to start. I think... Um, yeah, I guess I would say that building that focus, right, defining your focus into something real specific and then putting that into all of your marketing communications, yeah. all of your networking and really creating a perception of you as the expert in that area, that's that's a huge step. And, and I realize that we've talked about this before, right? Some, some attorneys feel like, well, I can't really, I can't say no to clients who are willing to pay me to do work in these other areas. And, and we've had this conversation. It's like you don't actually have to. You can still take that work in the short term while you're continuing to market for the niche that you're trying to, to attract. And, and in time, you'll, you'll draw enough work from your area of focus that you can begin to, to turn, turn down work in the other areas. Yeah, it, it, it's all about how you market yourself. You can still take some clients in certain things, but you can still market yourself as the expert in something specific. Let me just say this last thought as we wind down here. I think the bottom line, the thing we hope everyone takes away is that, that you become aware of this trend. Um, and honestly, you can take whatever position you want on it, right? Like you don't, like you don't have to look at, like you don't have to necessarily get pissed off and begin to hate all these companies we were talking about. Quite frankly, we're friends with some of the companies we talked about, and we believe in a lot of what they're doing. Um, but you know, you don't, 
it doesn't have to become you against them. If that if that makes you happy and that motivates you, take that right. mindset, sure. right? Um, um, but it's just really about recognizing that the marketplace is changing as a whole, yeah. even beyond legal, yeah. Yeah. right? And and it's going, it's, it's already starting to affect your industry, but it hasn't quite hit you guys like it's hit taxis right. and other things. Right. And, right. And like it's at accounting. Yep. Right? So the point is, is that if you start paying attention to it now, you're going to be really ahead of the curve yep. when when this yep. starts happening a well, lot more. Exactly. Right? Because it, it, there's an opportunity here, right? And and the, the reality is that a lot of attorneys are, are reacting to this in the wrong way. They're, they're panicking. And what they're doing to, to compete is just lowering their rates and feeling like, you know, they have less power than ever. If you do the opposite and really focus on building that brand and creating that market power and building that position as, as the expert, you've got, you're kind of swimming against the, against the, the flow here. And, and that's a powerful opportunity. Great. So to, I'll, I'll echo what, what Mark said just now, be aware of it, keep your eyes open, talk to people, talk to, you know, talk to your, your nieces and nephews and, and ask them if they've heard of this stuff, ask, ask customers. Um, if they've heard of it and, and what made them choose you over them, be aware of it, know what's happening, prepare for it, and, and there really is a good opportunity here at the end of the day. So I think that's about it. Great. I just want to point out we, um, we're going to drop a link in the comments here to a special report that we wrote on this topic where we dive a little bit deeper into what is happening in terms of the commodification of law. And we also expound quite a bit more than Mark and I had a chance to today on some of the practical action steps you can take to differentiate yourself in this market. So anything to add here, Mark? That's it. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.